I was up last night Thinking about the mean variance of standard deviation So I estimated them And it was cool Stack Quest Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to Stack Quest. Today we're going to continue our series on statistics fundamentals. This time we're going to talk about estimating the mean, variance, and standard deviation. Note, this stat quest assumes you already know about histograms, statistical distributions, and, specifically, the normal distribution. If not, check out the quests. The links are in the description below. Also, this stat quest assumes you already understand why we want to estimate population parameters. If not, check out the quest. In the stat quest on population parameters, we counted the number of mRNA transcripts from gene X in five different liver cells. Alternatively, if mRNA transcripts in liver cells didn't mean anything to you, we counted the number of green apples in five different grocery stores or green t-shirts in five different clothing stores, or whatever you want to measure in five different units. This green dot represented a liver cell that had three mRNA transcripts for gene X, and this green dot represented a liver cell that had 13 mRNA transcripts, 19, 24, and 29. Now, if we had a lot of time and money on our hands, we could count the number of mRNA transcripts for gene X in all 240 billion liver cells. Now we can draw a histogram of the measurements. If we wanted to fit a normal curve to this histogram like this, then we need to calculate the population mean and the population variance or population standard deviation. Calculating the population mean is easy we take the average of all 240 billion measurements. And we get 20 for the population mean. And we center the normal curve on the population mean. Note, because we calculated the mean with all 240 billion measurements in the population, this is not an estimate of the population mean. It is the population mean. However, since we rarely, if ever, have enough time and money to measure every single thing in a population, we almost always estimate the population mean using a relatively small sample. In this example, we have the measurements from only 5 of the 240 billion cells. Estimating the population mean is super easy. We just calculate the average of the measurements we collected. And in this case, the estimated population mean is 17.6. Oh no, it's the dreaded terminology alert! Statisticians often use the symbol X bar to refer to the estimated mean, which is also called the sample mean and they use the Greek symbol mu to refer to the population mean. The estimated mean, x bar, is different from the population mean, mu, but with more and more data, x bar should get closer and closer. Going back to the full set of population data, we will now determine how wide to make the curve by calculating, not estimating, the variance and standard deviation. In other words, we want to calculate how the data are spread around the population mean. This is the formula we use to calculate, not estimate, the population variance. Note, I'm making a big deal about calculating versus estimating variance because it makes a big difference that we'll talk about later. This part, x minus mu, means we subtract the population mean, mu, from each measurement, x. Boop, boop, beep, boop. Beep, boop. The square tells us to square each term. And the Greek character sigma tells us to add up all the terms. Lastly, 
We want the average of the squared differences, so we divide by the number of measurements, n, which in this case is 240 billion. Thus, we're just calculating the average of the squared differences between the data and the population mean. Note, squaring each term ensures that each difference is positive. Otherwise, the measurements on the left side of the mean would give negative differences, which would cancel out the positive differences from the measurements on the right side of the mean. Note, if you are wondering why we don't take the absolute value of each term, great! We'll talk about that in the follow-up video that dives deep into these details. Anyway, now we just do the math and we get 100 for the population variance. Bam. Okay, we calculated the population variance and we're all proud of ourselves. However, there is one thing that is annoying about it. Because each term is squared, the units for the result, 100, are mRNA transcripts squared. Note, if the data had been the number of apples in grocery stores, then the variance would be 100 apples squared. Either way, we can't plot the variance on the graph since the units on the x-axis are not squared. To solve this problem, we can take the square root of everything, and that gives us the population standard deviation. So the population standard deviation is the square root of 100, the population variance, which is 10 and we can plot that on the graph. This shows the mean, 20, plus and minus the standard deviation, 10 mRNA transcripts. BAM! Note, before we move on, I want to emphasize the point that we almost never have the population data, so we almost never calculate the population mean and population variance and standard deviation. Instead, we estimate the population variance and population standard deviation from the relatively small number of measurements that we have. Remember, the population variance and standard deviation determines how much the curve spreads out. And that means the estimated variance and the estimated standard deviation should reflect how the data are spread around the population mean. However, when we do an experiment, we don't see the curve or the population mean. We only see the data. So we have to use the estimated mean, x bar, instead. This is the formula we use to estimate the population variance. Because we almost always work with a relatively small sample and not the entire population, this is the formula we will use most of the time. The differences between this formula and the one for the calculated population variance are subtle but important. First, since we don't know the population mean, mu, we use the sample mean, x bar. Second, we are dividing by n minus 1 instead of n. Dividing by n minus 1 compensates for the fact that we are calculating the differences from the sample mean instead of the population mean. Otherwise, we would consistently underestimate the variance around the population mean. This is because the differences between the data and the sample mean tend to be smaller than the differences between the data and the population mean. Thus, the differences around the population mean will result in a larger average. And the larger average is what we are trying to estimate. Note. If you're like me and want to know more details about why we need to compensate for calculating differences from the sample mean, check out the follow-up stat quest. The link is in the description below. Now let's do the math. Just like before, we calculate the differences between the mean and the data. Then we square each term. Then we add up each term but now we divide by n minus 1. And the estimated population variance is 101.8.
Now we just take the square root of the estimated variance to get the estimated standard deviation. And we get 10.1. And we can draw the mean plus and minus the standard deviation on the graph. Double BAM! The estimated population parameters correspond to this purple curve with mean equals 17.6 and standard deviation equals 10.1. Which isn't too far off from the true distribution with mean equals 20 and standard deviation equals 10. With more data, the estimated parameters would be more accurate and we would have more confidence in them. However, with just five measurements, we still did pretty well, and that saved us a ton of time and money. Hooray! In summary, if we have all of the data from a population, we can calculate the population mean. The population mean equals the sum of the measurements divided by the number of measurements, and that equals the average measurement, mu. When we don't have the population data, we can estimate the population mean with the same formula. The estimated population mean equals the sum of the measurements divided by the number of measurements, which equals the average measurement, x bar. When we have the population data, we can calculate the population variance and standard deviation. The population variance is the average of the square differences between the data and the population mean, mu. In other words, we square these differences to prevent the ones on the left from canceling the ones on the right, and then take the average. And the population standard deviation is just the square root of the population variance. And since the standard deviation is in the original units that we measured, we can draw it on the graph. However, we almost never have the population data, so chances are you should not use these formulas. Instead, we almost always estimate the variance and standard deviation. When we estimate the population variance, we divide by n minus 1 to compensate for measuring distances from the sample mean instead of the population mean. And the estimated standard deviation is just the square root of the estimated population variance. And since the standard deviation is in the same units that we measured the data, we can draw it on the graph. And one last shameless plug for the follow-up stat quest. If you want to know why dividing by n underestimates the variance, check out the quest. The link is in the description below. Triple BAM! P.S. In this stat quest, I made a big deal about how we rarely have the population data and we almost always estimate the population parameters. One reason I did this was because, while many software packages estimate the variance and standard deviation by default, Microsoft Excel does not. Instead, it gives two choices. One function, var.p, calculates the population variance. The other, var.s, estimates it. Since we almost always have a relatively small sample rather than the population data, we should almost always use var.s. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, consider buying an original song or a t-shirt or a hoodie or just donating. The links are all in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!